Let's talk a little bit more about beating security pins, and I need to answer a couple of questions that have come in. The first is about selecting the right tension wrench, and the second is uh, how do you speed up the picking just a little bit. So I think I can answer both of those here, and we're going to use this Brinks lock. Now it's not a master lock. Uh, this one, the Brinks is a high security, or at least medium security lock. It does contain um, spool pins, five of them, and it is a laminate construction. It's got this rubber armor on the outside so it doesn't damage your door or your toolbox and it is a hardened uh, steel hasp as you can see it's not something like a master lock we're going to cut through with a pair of wire cutters or a hacksaw very quickly pretty tough now it is very much like the master lock in construction though it's a laminate construction the lock is permanently riveted into place as you see here can't be removed so whatever it is that's in there you're stuck with it you can never change it the other thing I'd like to point out, very similar to master lock and all the lo all laminate locks, is that we have the brass core, and then the bottom of the keyway is open, as you see, and you can see that rim of steel. That's the steel, the body of the lock itself. So that's that could uh, represent a potential hazard to us. That could slow us down. Well, how does that happen? Well, uh, let's get into the selection of tension wrenches. When we buy our tension wrenches, let me try to line these up for you here and get them into focus. When we buy tension wrenches, typically they come in sets of three. Uh, the one on the left here is the thin one, and quite honestly it's not good for much of anything except the smallest of keyways. So it's not something we routinely will pick up. The next one is the medium thickness. Now that is by default, that's probably the most commonly used thickness in all of the locks if we're going to use bo uh, bottom of the keyway tension. And if we get into the habit of grabbing this medium one all the time, that could get us into trouble, particularly when we're dealing with master locks or these laminate type locks, because in those locks this is the, not the correct one, and I'll show you why. If we take the medium one and we only carry that one and we just mindlessly grab it and we stick it in there and we apply tension to it, what you'll notice, if I can get it, there we go, get it in focus here, is that the plug really doesn't turn. That that uh, tension wrench is wedging in the bottom of that keyway. It's the perfect wrong length and there you see it's wedged in and we can't even get that we can't even shake it loose and that's because it's frozen it's wedged in there from corner to corner in the bottom of the keyway it's applying pressure between the plug and the body of the lock so you can't turn it no matter how much tension I'm not putting any tension on that plug and we will never find the binding pin if we use this this one so that would be the wrong one so in this case the, the thick one is the one we're looking for. So we'll take that one, we'll put it in place. And what I typically do is whenever I put my, pick, you know, my tension wrench in, just touch it a couple of times and observe the plug and make sure it's rotating freely. And in this case, it is. So that would be the right choice. Now let's talk about how to accelerate our picking speed. Now, in earlier videos, uh, my technique is uh, I'll just take my hook, and uh, because I'm not under any time constraints, I don't do it competitively, and I'll, I showed you how I'll just pick it, stick it in there and just kind of pick randomly until there. I get a fault set. Uh, this is, it's oriented this way, typically, and when you get a fault set, it's going to turn three to five degrees. You might not be able to see it so well, but you'll certainly feel it on your finger there when it turns. It, feel, it's, it feels like a massive move but the, the plug doesn't open, but it feels like it almost does. And in fact, what that tells us is that at least one of the security pins, or one of the pins has set. And if we're lucky, more than one, particularly if we're in a competition. But we're going to let this fault set go. That's not how competitors do it. What they typically will do is grab some form of rake. It doesn't matter what kind. It can be a snake rake or a Bogota or a, this is a, a worm rake. It doesn't really matter. When the time when the guy, when they say go and the timer begins, these guys will put the tension wrench in. They'll stick that tension wrench or that uh, snake in there, and they'll rake it into a fault set. And that's what happened. You saw how quickly that happened. And then typically they'll they'll throw that thing down. They they don't need it anymore because raking it any any more after you get that fault set is not going to do you any good. Then they'll grab their hook. Now they they take their hook and they they're now they're looking for which pin is the binding pin. Now, how do we know that? Well, I typically begin in the back. It doesn't matter where you begin because you never know where it's going to be. It's like Christmas. And you move up and down the stack of pins until you get some feedback uh, and some counter rotation on your tension wrench. Well, let's see if I can work around the camera here and, get some, and find it. And there we go. I'm on pin number four. 
and when I put a little bit of pressure on it you can see that I'm getting counter rotation and you can feel it on your left finger. See it bouncing just a little bit? So try to position your pick directly on the head of that pin. Apply constant pressure. Don't shove it up in there because you'll overset it and if you really pry it you can bend or break your pick and then you gotta start all over. It's kind of a mess. So you put constant pressure on the head of that pin and instead of applying additional pressure with your pick just release with your tension finger just a little bit and allow that pin to slide in place. And we'll try that now and we heard it click. Oh my goodness. Well, <laughs> again we've been very lucky here. That doesn't typically happen that way. When we rake it, uh, there are five pins in here and by, again by pure luck, this took no skill on my part. I wish I could take credit for it. We raked four of those pins into place and in a competition this is really what they're shooting for. That That is the that's the golden fleece and then they only have to pick the seat, the bound pin and then boom they get open they yell open and then of course they win so anyway uh, that's how you go about it uh, if you have any questions please send me an email uh, as always stay safe and for goodness sake stay legal thanks for your time